So hey guys, welcome to a different segment of videos where I'm going to talk about some documentary series and TV shows that I've watched over the course of my recovery. For those who might not have known, um, I did have foot and ankle surgery earlier in the summer, so I had a lot of time to kind of watch a lot of films, documentaries, documentary series, and TV shows while I was recovering. Uh, I'm still kind of in my, in my recovery process because I'm actually wearing a walking boot while filming this video, um, and I even have my scooter bike that I've been getting around with for my knee, for our knee scooter. Um, so in this segment of videos, I'm going to talk about, like I said, documentaries, TV shows, and things like that that I've watched over the course of my recovery, and let you guys know kind of a rating and which ones you guys should track down and things like that if you're interested in kind of watching some of these. So I guess to start the video off, let's talk about some HBO documentary series I've seen over the course of my recovery. Um, I've watched a special called The 80s. I've watched a special called The 90s. i watched a special called The 2000s. And then I've also watched a series called The History of Comedy. All of these are HBO documentary series that you can stream on HBO Max and other CNN-related uh, streaming services. I think they have their own streaming service of some kind as well. Um, basically, for all of these, you kind of get to know the history of that decade or, in the history of comedy's case, that genre. Kind of all the things that happen with politics and movies and TV shows and kind of how... Um, even in like the history of comedy's case, like how that genre has impacted people who work in that field with stand-up comedy and comedy movies and things like that. Um, so I guess as far as positives and negatives go for this series, um, it's very informative. There's always interesting stuff that they cover. There's things that were um, discovered that I never knew or, or would have thought about before watching the documentary series. So things that were happening in the 80s and the 90s and things like that. Um, all very interesting stuff. But from my negative of pretty much all of these kinds of documentary series that are available on HBO and CNN, uh, some of the topics and subject matters covered I thought were more interesting than others depending on the episodes. So like I liked the movie ones better than the politics episodes. Um, I liked the TV show and technology episodes better than you know like the economics related episodes and things like that. Um, so it really just kind of vary on your taste, I would say. So I would say if you're interested in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, or the, the comedy genre in general, all of these are great. I would probably give all of these a 9 out of 10. Um, the next one I saw was an HBO documentary, and it's called Spielberg. It's about the film career of Steven Spielberg. Um, it kind of covers all the things that happened before he got famous, how he got noticed, um, how while watching Lawrence of Arabia in the 60s almost kind of scared him away from becoming a director because he thought Lawrence of Arabia at the time was kind of the definitive movie that couldn't be beaten, that there was no other film that could be better than that movie and things like that. Obviously, he saw things along the way like The Godfather and things like that that really kind of encouraged him that great films can still be made, but you have to work hard to kind of get there. <clears throat> It also goes over certain aspects of Steven Spielberg's life, like his parents' divorce, uh, being raised Jewish, and things like that, that kind of worked his way into his movies and kind of made him the director that he is today. Um, so from the positives and negatives of this HBO documentary, there's tons of new things to learn and to, um, uh, you know, behind-the-scenes things about Steven Spielberg that you wouldn't have known before watching this documentary. Um they even kind of go over smaller things that you probably wouldn't have thought about, like how the Star Wars crawl and all the original three um, original trilogy Star Wars films were actually came to be based off of a private screening that George Lucas had with Spielberg and with Brian De Palma and Martin Scorsese and all these other famous directors that became even more famous over time. And Brian De Palma made the suggestion that he didn't really understand what was going on in this world before the film started. And so George Lucas and him came up with the idea of this opening crawl that kind of explained what was happening in that world before the film began. And so obviously that was something that George Lucas kept for all the other Star Wars installments later on. And that was all based off of a Brian De Palma um, constructive criticism that he made in a private screening to George Lucas. Um, how the divorce co constantly shows up in Steven Spielberg's work is also explained um, and why it keeps showing up and things like that. Uh, but for my negatives of the Spielberg documentary, certain films get covered but others don't. Uh, one film that they covered in kind of specific detail, and I'm a little surprised by this, is the film Munich. Yeah, it was kind of big at the time and things like that, but is it really belong in the same conversation as, like, say, E.T. or Jurassic Park or Schindler's List and things like that? So there's a lot of scenes where they kind of go over some films of Spielberg's that really weren't that big to begin with, and it kind of is shocking based on 
what films they had to skip to cover those films that they feel that they had to cover in this. So there's certain aspects like that that I thought were could have been better in it. But I would give the overall Spielberg documentary a 9.5 out of 10. It's very, very good, and I highly recommend it. The next documentary I watched was one called Starring Adam West. Um, this is a documentary about what Adam West did after the Batman TV series was done on television. And... Um, what he did, you know, financially to kind of stay alive and things like that. So for my positives and negatives of starring Adam West, it's a well-made documentary with new information discovered on Adam West's personal life. Uh, there's, it shows how rough things got after Batman, how it got canceled on TV. There's a lot of behind the scenes footage shown of Adam West at Comic-Con events and from home videotapes and things in his life that you would have been able to see before this documentary. Uh, but for my negatives of starring Adam West, the documentary doesn't really explore Adam West's take on the later Batman films very much. It doesn't, really doesn't go over what he thought of Michael Keaton's Batman and Val Kilmer's Batman and things like that. Um, or the other interpretations of the Batman character, like what, um, like what they did with him on the animated series and things like that. Um, the documentary, I thought, also could have explored more of Adam West's opinion on certain topics. Um, as it seems to show more of the facts rather than the stuff that... Um, it was showing more of like his life and career and things like that. Um, so I thought the documentary um, could have shown more of like his personal take on certain things because they were kind of exploring the facts for so long that they really don't go into detail on how he personally felt about certain things. So I thought that aspect of the film could have been better. So I would give starring Adam West to 8.5 out of 10. Um, I really like it a lot. I think there's certain aspects though, like getting his opinion on certain things some more getting his opinion on later Batman interpretations and how it got darker and things like that. I thought that aspect could have been more interesting and could have been better handled. So I think I am going to end it here just because I have a lot more to talk about in this next video. Uh, but that's the end of part one. So hopefully in part two and three, I can kind of wrap up some other documentaries and shows I've seen over the course of my recovery. So I'll see you guys back here for part two for more content.